Hello everyone, welcome to this video. Today we are going to see how to create a current mode controller for LTS files. In this presentation we will see an introduction, then we will show the schematic and diagram of our current mode controller. We will explain how to implement this controller in LTS files. And finally, we will show several LTS Spice simulations to demonstrate the correct operation of the controller and also how to use this controller in several applications. These are relevant videos related to this topic that we have seen previously. Power Electronics number 37 related to the dynamic modeling of current mode controlled DC-DC converters and Power Electronics 50 and 51 related to the unstable behavior of current mode controlled DC-DC converters and how to solve the stability issue. So if you have not done so, please take a look at these videos where you find more information about this topic. This is the schematic of the current mode control that we have seen in this previous video, Power Electronics number 51 in which we presented the back converter. We are measuring the current through the inductor. We add an auxiliary ramp to the current through the inductor and send this into the comparator. We have the reference of the peak current, IP, that we inject into the inverting input of the comparator. We have the flip-flop. We have a clock at the switching frequency. And in closed loop operation, we measure the output voltage and send this information into the error amplifier, which is going to generate the reference for the peak current of the inductor. So this is what we need to implement in our controller. We need an auxiliary ramp and other here. We need a comparator, a flip-flop, an oscillator, and an error amplifier to implement the closed loop operation. So this is the schematic in LTS spice of our controller. Here we have the clock at the frequency F. We have here the auxiliary ramp. The auxiliary ramp is defined from zero to a maximum value, which is given by the slope MA divided by M. You can see here the waveform corresponding to the auxiliary ramp. So at this point here, at the end of the period, we have a value which is MA times T. So it's MA over F. Then we have the other, we have the comparator, the flip-flop, and we are using a gate driver here, so we can connect directly the gate of the transistor at this point. And then we have an error amplifier, which is characterized by the DC gain and the bandwidth. So for our controller, we are going to have the following parameters, the switching frequency, of the clock signal and the ramp, the slope of the auxiliary ramp, the gate voltage VCC that we want to generate for the gate signal, and the parameters of the error amplifier, the DC gain and the 0 dB frequency corresponding to the bandwidth of the amplifier. And then from this schematic, we can create our new component for LTS Spice. You can see how to do this in this video. LTS Spice number four, how to create new components from schematics. And also these components like the auxiliary ramp, the other, the comparator, the oscillator, the gate and driver are from our Simulink compatible control library. And you can find information about this library in this video, LTS Spice number 11 and subsequent videos. So finally, note that we have three inputs. I sense corresponding to the current through the inductor, or we can also measure the current through the transistor. We have the non-inverting input of the operational amplifier and the inverting input of the operational amplifier. 
then we have these two outputs for additional information. We are generating the clock as an output and also this output corresponding to the addition of the auxiliary ramp and the current sensing input. Then we have another output for the gate of the switch, the source of the switch, and finally the output corresponding to the operational amplifier. Here we have the implementation of the component in LTSPICE. This is the symbol. These are the default parameters that we can modify for our application. And this is the description of the component. We are also adding the definition of the operational amplifier here. So in this way, we don't need to have the operational amplifier included in our schematic. However, we need to install the library control.lib. Remember that we have this information here related to this library. And you can download this library from my website. Also, if you are not familiar with creating and installing new components in LTSPICE, please take a look at this video, LTSPICE number three, how to create new components. So you can download this component from my website. This is the link. And in this section here, we have other LTSPICE components. These are different components that we have seen in previous videos. And this is the current component, the current mode controller. And also regarding the control library, you can download the control library from this link here. And now let's see an example of using our controller in LTSPICE. Here we have the back converter that we have seen in previous videos. This is our component that we have just created. We are going to use the default parameters. And now we are going to operate the converter in open loop. So we are connecting the output of the error amplifier to the inverting input and we are just injecting a reference value of 0.9 for the peak of the current. We are measuring here the current through the inductor and sending this information uh, to the input I sense. And then we are connecting the gate and the source with the gate and the source of the transistor. So we can now run a simulation and see, for example, first the output voltage. So we are getting a given value of the output voltage. We can add another, another pane and see, for example, the current through the inductor. We can see here the addition of the current through the inductor with the auxiliary ramp. So this in red here, we have the addition of both of them. And this is the reference for this signal, the addition of both the current and the ramp. We can also show the clock signal if we want. Maybe we can multiply this by 0 0.5 so we can see this better. And also if we want maybe Adding another pane, we can see the gate to source voltage corresponding to the gate signal. So we can see that everything is working well in our converter and the controller in principle is operating correctly. Of course, if we increase the peak value, we can get a higher value of the output voltage, for example, say 1.5 and then run the simulation again. So now the output voltage that we are getting is 6.1 volts. Now we are going to do a simulation in closed loop to obtain 5 volts here at the output. So now we are measuring the output voltage and sending this information into the error amplifier. Now we are using this network here to do the feedback of the error amplifier and the implementation of the compensator. We are injecting a reference voltage of 5 volt to the non-inverting input of the error amplifier. So with this we can run 
the simulation and then see the output voltage so we can see how we can get at the end the value of 5 volts. We can also show other traces, for example, the current through the inductor, so we can see how we get steady state and normal operation. But also, maybe we can try to get a higher value of the output voltage to see that the auxiliary ramp is working well. Maybe say that we want to obtain here 6.5 volts. We run the simulation again and then we can see how at the end of the transient we are getting also the correct value of the output voltage. Now let's do a simulation to evaluate the performance in closed loop operation when we do a step on the load. So we are using this switch here to connect another load of 5 ohms in parallel with the original load at the time instant equal to 1 millisecond. So we can run the simulation and then we can see the output voltage. We can also show the signal that we are using to change the load and we can see how the voltage here is 5 volts, then we have the transient and then we are recovering the level of 5 volts at the output. We can maybe add another pane to see the current through the inductor. Also we can see the addition of the current through the inductors and to the inductor um, the ramp and remember that now what is uh, giving the reference for the peak is the output of the compensator so is the signal here at the output of the compensator so we can see in pink this signal that is limiting the peak of the current and finally, we are doing here a simulation when we perform a step transient at the input voltage. So now at one millisecond, we are increasing the input voltage in three volts. So let's see what happens now. We can see here the output voltage. We can add also maybe the input voltage. So we can see here the step up of the input voltage and then we can see how there is almost no transient at the output. The output voltage remains always equal to 5 volts. Let's see to explain this the current through the inductor and what we can see is that the input voltage is directly related with the slope of the current through the inductor. So this is the reason why we have a very quick transient here in which we are almost keeping constant the output voltage because the slope of the current changes immediately. So this is another advantage of the current mode control. We have a, a very quick response of the output voltage against perturbations in the input voltage. We can see the other waveforms, maybe in this waveform as we have seen before, and then also on the output of the compensator. So this is the way we limit the peak current, the addition of the current through the inductor and the auxiliary ramp. Well, with this we get to the end of this presentation. Please let me know if you have any comment or question. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.